Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, to the podcast. I am Donna, and I am glad you're here and have taken time out of your busy day to listen to my podcast and to hopefully help you in a way that will give you some understanding and knowledge about the 100 trillion microbes that live inside of you and all the things they can do for you to keep you healthy. Today, we're going to be talking about kidneys and kefir, and um, it's a pretty big topic. I get a lot of emails about this, and it really surprised me because I didn't really know that these uh, probiotic foods could help our kidneys, but uh, they actually really do. I received several emails from people who had been greatly helped by cultured foods in regards to kidney health. And more and more medical research is showing great benefits to using probiotics for kidney health. And probiotic use in chronic kidney disease, which which they label CKD, um, in patients who have this problem, continues to be a huge area of interest among renal health professionals. And it's becoming widely accepted that people with chronic kidney disease have really altered gut floras. This is an area of interest because ultra gut floras impact a patient in a myriad of ways. And in the forefront of gastrointestinal health and the trying to help people that have toxins um, in their kidneys, restoring the balance to intestinal flora favorably impacts those with chronic kidney disease as it would help any individual, uh, but it also helps them improve their GI issues, such as constipation or diarrhea, and as well as it promotes healthy digestion and it improves their immunity. And this is what they're finding in uh, patients who have you know, chronic kidney disease, but this is also a fact that helps just the majority of people in general. Um, you know, They go about their days, they don't even know how their kidneys are doing. Um, but the good news is, there are certain strains of bacteria that can really help and promote um, good intestinal flora that also will help your kidneys to do their job. Reducing uremic toxins um, by using probiotics has been shown to really be very promising in several studies, and so, so much so that new probiotic supplements have been developed to specifically treat the kidneys, and there has been some really remarkable results. Certain strains of probiotics can gobble up urea and uric acids, creatine, and many other toxins that are not being eliminated by your underperforming kidneys. And as that healthy bacteria grows and multiplies, they consume more and more of these poisonous substances in reducing the overall toxic levels in people with compromised kidney uh, function. And that's really surprising to me. I didn't know um, that bacteria could do this, which is exciting to me because they kind of use it as a food source. And so what is toxic to us, they are cleaning up inside of our bodies, much like they do an oil spill. Um, They've used bacteria to clean up oil spills in the ocean. Um, They're doing the same thing inside of us, inside of our kidneys. And it it was really quite a surprise to me when people started emailing me about this. I really didn't know or hadn't heard much about this. Um, but it was helping people with kidney stones and for people to not need uh, kidney dialysis. And it was thrilling to me because I never knew there was a connection. And not only were people seeing improvement in kidney function, but they were also seeing that the cultured foods that they were eating were helping prevent kidney stones. L- let me share with you uh, one of my favorite emails uh, about cultured foods and kidney health. Dear Donna, I wrote to you a couple months ago desperate for some help. My kidneys doctor had told me that my kidneys were functioning at 20% and I needed to choose which form of dialysis I would prefer. That was a death sentence to me. I had had several health problems through the years and this was heading for a crash really soon. I had asked you if you had ever heard of anybody who had tried this cultured food and drink way of life and it did it help with kidney function at all. And you told me that you had not heard of it, but you gave me some encouragement to try it anyway. In my grief and despair, I decided to do just that, Donna. I went back to the kidney care doctor just recently, and he kept shaking his head and saying he didn't understand how or why this would have worked. But not only had I lost weight in the two months since I'd last seen him, but my kidney function went up 10%, which is a huge improvement. Yay, God. And he said he had never heard of this happening before, 
And then the nurse came back in after the visit and said, in all the years she's worked with him, she's never seen him speechless like this. And all of this done after only doing it for approximately one and a half months. And that was thrilling to me. That was one of the first emails I got about how um, bacteria can help our kidney function. And to understand things like how uh, kidney stones form, um, if you want to understand that, it's kind of an interesting thing. A kidney stone is a solid piece of material that forms in the urinary tract when there are high levels of certain substances, such as calcium, oxalate, and uric acid. For about 80% of Americans who have kidney stones, this substance is called calcium oxalate. And while this is a natural substance found in urine, Calcium oxalate and the other substances found in kidney stones do not normally cause problems because they're very relatively in low concentrations in the body. They usually kind of pass through the body and are disposed of in the urine. However, when they reach high concentrations in the body, they aren't able to pass through, so they form into stones or kidney stones. And there are many ways to treat kidney stones, including surgical removal, or sometimes they use shock waves to break up the stones into smaller, passable pieces. But these, these, uh, these treatments don't really address why they develop kidney stones in the first place. So there is a bacterium naturally found in the digest, digestive tract called Exalobacter formigenes that has been shown to degrade oxalate. And this prevents kidney stones from forming. The levels of this compound were, will vary depending on your gut acidity and salts. And in some individuals, you can't even detect it. But it's a very susceptible to commonly used antibiotics. In one study, adult volunteers who ingested a dose, Exalobacter for my genes, had a reduced concentration of oxalate in their urine. While it is not known if this compound is in cultured foods, another study showed that this particular bacteria strain in cultured food be just as effective at reducing oxalate concentrations. This was seen in a four-week study in which six patients with major risk for kidney stones received a daily probiotic containing a, a Lactobacillus acidophilus, Lactobacillus planetarum, a Lactobacillus breves, uh, and there was also a couple other ones that were found in cultured foods that were also included in this study. The results showed a huge reduction of oxalate in all six subjects. And another study done by the California Dairy Research Foundation and Dairy Food Culture Technology got similar results in, in doing the same study in many other people. It was just this week that a woman posted on my Facebook page um, which is at Donna Schwing's Culture Food Life, if you'd like to take a look. And she sent me the sweetest note about her golden retriever dog who was experiencing kidney failure. It really warmed my heart, and it made me thankful for foods that can heal and help not just make us well, but our free friends too. And I want to read you this. She said, Dear Donna, my healthy seven-year-old golden retriever fell really ill all of a sudden in October 2017. He was so weak he couldn't even get up and a total loss of appetite, which really isn't him at all. We rushed him to the vet and the vet ran a series of tests on him and diagnosed him with stage four kidney failure. We found it so hard to believe that just 24 hours earlier, he was so healthy and happy and now he was suffering from end stage kidney failure. The vet didn't know what could have caused it or how this could have happened to our dog, but basically she told us that there was no treatments for such an advanced stage um, of kidney failure in animals, and we just need to try to keep him as comfortable as possible from now on. The vet also informed us that she had never seen any pets recover from stage four kidney failure, and so she was, t was really telling us to prepare for the worst, and it was heart-wrenching. However, I knew in my heart that Kiefer would heal my dog, and as soon as we brought my dog home from the vet, we immediately fed him milk Kiefer using a syringe as he had no appetite whatsoever and didn't want to eat anything. And the very next morning, we took our dog back to the vet for a checkup, and the test results showed that his kidney function had improved just a little bit. So we were encouraged by that, so we continued feeding him Kiefer a few times a day for a week. And by the end of the week, we took our dog back to the vet for another checkup, and the test results showed that his kidney function was back to normal. This was just after a week of taking Kiefer daily. The vet was completely dumbfounded, and we were so, so, so happy and thankful and grateful 
for this Kiefer miracle. Our dog has remained healthy ever since that health scare, and we continue to feed him Kiefer daily. And it's interesting, um, something happened to me uh, with my dog, and uh, it kind of jarred my memory when I was reading this. And we had just moved to our new home in California, and um, I noticed that my, well, actually my daughter noticed that my little Yorkie was um, peeing blood, and it was not good, and he wasn't eating, and and it was a lot. It was all the time. We didn't know what was wrong with him. And so I was new in town. I didn't have a vet, so I was going to try to find a vet. But in the meantime, I started giving him a bunch of kefir. And actually, he wasn't eating, so I gave it to him in a syringe. And uh, he, I gave it to him a couple times a day. Well, within a day, he stopped uh, peeing blood. And then um, I started giving it to him uh, quite a bit that whole week. And that was about a year ago, and he has not had any problems since. And he was in a lot of pain. I think he might have had kidney stones because he would just sit and shake all over like something was really wrong all in the middle of the night, and I think he was just in pain. Um, but within a day of giving him that, I noticed him calm down. He stopped that. He stopped looking like he was in pain. He slept and uh, he stopped peeing the blood. So I never took him to the vet. Um, and it's, you know, because it, it went away. Um, but it was a godsend for me because I was new to town. I didn't have a vet. I, I didn't have a, didn't even know where we were going to live for sure. And um, it, was, it was a wonderful thing to be able to give him something to reduce the pain. If, if nothing else, to reduce the pain. But from that day to this, he's been fine. And I don't know if it was kidney stones. I don't know what it was. Um, but it was exciting to me that it helped him so much. And since that time, I've had a few more people write me and tell me about how much kefir has helped their kidney function. And, um, you know, dialysis is a very severe thing. I think it takes like four and a half hours twice a week to go through it. And it, it just really changes your life. And our kidneys just are, you know, work so hard for us all the time, filtering out our toxins and filtering out um, things that are, you know, our bodies are ingesting and and, can, and trying to eliminate them. And the powerful thing that I've learned is that um, these bacteria that I talk about, and they're in kefir and culture vegetables and kombucha, they are wonderful. Uh, they assist us in helping us remove toxins from the body. And not only do they do it in the body, but they do it in the vegetables. Like if you make culture vegetables, they remove 99% of all the pesticides and chemicals in them. And um, the same with kefir, it, it, it really changes the food that it's in. Because not only does it detoxify the food, it detoxifies us when we eat it. And that's very exciting to me because what I've, I have found is that, you know, we're just in, inundated with tons of chemicals and pesticides, even if we have a clean and healthy diet. It's just everywhere in our environment. And there is nothing that I think is more important than we use our bacteria that we have to help us um, detoxify. Because 50% of the detoxification in our body goes on in our gut. And so that's an important thing to know. But not only that, our kidneys are helping us all the time, filtering out waste and toxins. And so if the bacteria, if you can get a visual picture of this, so... The bacteria, if we have enough of the right bacteria in our body, and I think I, I talked about what that was. Hang on, let me see which ones they used on that. Hang on, let me go back, because I like talking about the different strains of bacteria. Okay, um, lactobacillus acidophilus, lactobacillus plantarum, that's in cultured vegetables and kefir, lactobacillus breves, um, and then there's like four or five more other ones, but all of those are in cultured foods. And what they do is they go in and they eat the toxins that's in the urea that is causing the problems in our body, whether it's kidney stones or just allowing our kidney function to not work well. It consumes them and then it filters it out in our, and it's done for us. And we don't even know that's happening. But if we don't have these right types of bacteria in our body, um, if we don't have large amounts of them, then our body can't do its job. And so whether it's your dog, whether it's your kid, whether it's your husband or wife or your friend or whatever, um, your kidneys are a powerful, uh, they're a powerful detoxifier in the body and they need all the help they can get. And these foods can assist them to do that. And I've seen it again and again, and it's, it's a wonderful thing. 
So where do you find these foods? You can, you can make them or you can buy them. Grocery stores have them now. Um, there's many different brands of kefir, but generally speaking with kefir, um, they are not nearly as strong as homemade kefir. And that's because the manufacturers often have to follow certain regulations um, that diminishes some of the abilities of the kefir. I'm not saying there's not good ones out there. I think there is. Um, but I think that for the most part, what I've seen in my line of work is that people who make their own do significantly better and receive more benefits. And you can make it yourself super easy. You can make a jar of kefir in 24 hours and you don't need any special equipment. You just need kefir grains or you need what I have called easy kefir, which is a package of kefir. And you just put your milk in it or your non-dairy milk, whatever kind of medium you want to use. You stick it in there, you put it in on, on your counter for 24 hours, and the next day you have 50 plus good bacteria in your kefir. And if you get kefir grains, they last a lifetime if you take care of them. And, um, you know, easy kefir is wonderful. It's made from kefir grains, and you can take a portion of the jar that you made. It does not contain grains. Um, but the bacteria that from the grains is in that so that when you make a jar, then the next jar, you can take a portion of the first jar you made it and make another jar with it. And it keeps going for a very, very long time. And you get a lot more benefits from homemade kefir. And guys, it's so easy to make. It's 10 times easier to make than yogurt. Yogurt, you usually have to have a yogurt maker and you have to keep it at a certain temperature and you have to heat the milk. You basically take just cold milk from the fridge and you can do it with non-dairy milk too. And you throw it in a quart jar and you put your either grains in it or your easy kefir. And you can find all this on my website at culturedfoodlife.com. It gives you instructions on how to do this. And you put a lid on it and you let it sit in the for 24 hours. And the next day you have kefir. It's that simple. And um, the beauty of it is that it's so simple and it's life-sustaining. Your grains can last your lifetime. So it's not something you've got to buy all the time. And, you can sh- and they're going to grow and multiply. You can share them with your friends and your family. Um, I've had mine 17 years. It's crazy. And they still make me kefir every day. And I just had gallons and gallons of kefir in my lifetime from these these one set of grains that grow and multiply and uh, really have changed my life in a powerful way. So this is just some help for those of you who are struggling with kidney stones or kid- or or kidney chronic kidney disease. Anything that I can do to help you to make your life better, I hope I can do for you because uh, it's just... It's just a wonderful mechanism that we live in. Our bodies are magnificent, and I love what they can do, but I love the bacteria in our body. I love that we have 100 trillion bacteria in our body because it can change everything, um, change everything in your life. It changed everything for me, not only your moods. Um, it helped my blood pressure. It helped my diabetes. It helped all these things go away and normalize, and then I started living the life that I was really meant to live and not one of sickness and disease. So I hope this helps you. I hope um, I encourage you. Just take a look, see how it does for you. Um, if it doesn't, don't worry. I, I'm just out sharing my message, and I'm just trying to help other people, uh, share with them what other has helped other people too. And don't forget about your little furry friends. If they're struggling or, or have problems with kidney disease or kidney stones, don't forget to give them a little kefir, even just a spoonful. I just gave like a spoonful to my little Yorkie and it was enough. That's all I gave him. And uh, my daughter gives her dog, like I think a cup and his dry food every day. And it has made such a difference for my little, my little furry friends and my puppies and, and for my daughter's puppies because they, they, they thrive on it. Kids and kids and dogs do the best on these foods. They seem to just change overnight. So that's just a little bit of heads up. Your kidneys might need some kefir and you might want to check it out. And you can head over to my website at culturefoodlife.com and uh, take a look. And you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next Tuesday.